Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm going from Kuwait City to Dubai in a Gulfstream 4. This is a freeware Gulfstream 4. And, oh right, I've got X-Camera on. And that's because you can see that we're sort of tilted on the horizon. And that's a little bit weird. So I'm going to use X-Camera, which is another plugin you have to buy. I think there's a free version. Uh, but. Uh, to correct that roll because I don't know why that's happening but I need to correct it uh, but uh, in order to turn your head with X camera uh, well you either have some sort of tracking thing or you use the middle mouse button instead of the right mouse button so anyway that's how I'm gonna fix that for this plane I, I don't know why I'm having that problem I had it on the last flight as well I'm being sort of tilted but I'll figure that out some other time so this is our Gulfstream 4 and looking okay. Got a variety of liveries. I decided to go with this one for no particular reason. And we are going to continue with the Apollo 12 audio. They are currently still in orbit around the moon and making observations uh, because they have a lot more time around the moon than Apollo 11 did. And uh, hopefully soon we'll get to where they depart uh, lunar orbit for the Earth, but I'm not sure we'll get to that in this video. We'll see. So here we go with the audio. One, zero. He's reading up uh, Three, burn time zero, and burn two, delta Vs. Zero, and we will Six, proceed. Zero, one, two, three, two, niner. Two, three, seven. Foresight. Zero, four, one. Gulfstream is obviously a favorite plane for various government services. There's a livery for the Air Force and the uh, Marines available. I seem to recall the FBI using it as well. So obviously he's still over Kuwait here uh, for a little while. Not a whole lot of cities except for Kuwait City and its immediate environs though. Okay, 
Allen, did you copy the uh, GDC aligned stars and uh, angles? Roger. Sirius and Rigel, 138-079-002. Four jets, 11 seconds. Roger, you got it, Al. This is Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight. You heard uh, J Capcom Jerry Carr pass along the uh, preliminary TEI Revolution 45 pad. And uh, we will discern some of those numbers and pass them along to you. The uh, ground elapsed time uh, for ignition included in this pad is 172 hours, uh, 27 minutes. 16.15 seconds with a delta velocity in the x-axis of uh, plus uh, 3,027.4 feet per second with a uh, burn time of uh, 2 minutes 10 seconds. The uh, ground elapsed time for 0.05 g based on this preliminary pad is 244 hours, 21 minutes, 55 seconds with uh, a longitude and latitude show uh, so is a re-entry pad 18.82 degrees south Once again, longitude. they always read up all these pieces of information west longitude. way ahead of uh, time this, just this in case communication is lost. Uh, will be updated. We're at uh, 169 hours, nine minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours, uh, 34 minutes, now into the flight of Apollo 12. We presently show Apollo 12 in an orbit uh, around the Kuwait moon doesn't seem to have any of those fancy island structures uh, that uh, you see in the UAE, but does have this Apple particular We've had, uh, no conversation with the harbor, I guess I'll call it. Since we contacted them at the onset of this acquisition, the uh, crew, uh, no doubt, is oh, we're going a bit fast uh, with their stereo photography and. Uh, Following that uh, landmark tracking on this, the 44th revolution. Certainly easy to go fast with this. Meanwhile, we have received a uh, report uh, that the ALSEP central station and all experiments continue to function at this time, 47 hours after deployment on the lunar surface by the crew of Apollo 12. Normal uh, scientific measurements uh, were supplemented uh, by significant effects of uh, the lunar module uh, ascent and the uh, impact of the empty uh, ascent stage. As far as I can surface. tell, this the is called Al Kiran, the Al Kiran Resort. Uh, and the resulting waves were seen by the passive seismic experiment uh, for some 55 minutes. The magnetometer observed flux variations uh, for about 10 minutes at the time of uh, limb ascent. At 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on November 20, it detected entry of the moon into the Earth's magnetic uh, tail. Removal of the dust covers uh, from the sensors of the solar wind uh, spectrometer were accomplished by ground command uh, one hour after limb ascent. This event was detected by the passive seismic experiment. The solar winds spectrometer instrument is now in full operations. <coughs> Measurements of the thermal ion detector increased at the time of limb ascent. There was also a slight increase uh, which may be related to a uh, limb impact. High voltage uh, power supplies in this instrument shut themselves off after an initial period of operation. Command turn on can be performed successfully, but uh, subsequently shuts off. 
This is believed to indicate an outgassing of the instrument in the lunar vacuum and should clear up after a, a thorough bake-out, uh, perhaps around lunar noon. We're at uh, 169 hours, uh, 37 minutes, uh, now under the flight of Apollo 12, and uh, this is Apollo Control continuing to monitor. Okay, we are across the Kuwaiti uh, Saudi Arabian border. I think you can see the border sort of right there. Uh, bending so right where our wing is right now. And just across the border, the first town is Kafji, which is what we are flying over now. Clipper Houston, if we can have Poon accept, we'll ship your refs mat up. Not a whole lot of towns on this coast of Saudi Arabia. But uh, we will pass over a few other countries, including Bahrain and Qatar. Clipper Houston, uh, got a special report for you uh, on your CSM consumables. We've had you doing so many off nominal things, we thought you'd probably like a quick off the cuff report. <laughs> right now you stand as so many of, uh, off nominal things because uh, they've changed the, uh, the flight plan. That's not a criticism of them. And it's uh, Alpha is 38%, Bravo is 37, Charlie's 37, and Delta is 36. Over. I don't even know if they've uh, fixed the propellant readouts in the capsule. Roger. After it got struck by lightning, those got busted, and I don't know if uh, those are being read again. So Apollo control oh, it's going Houston slower at, now. Uh, okay, let's level hours, uh, 51 minutes now to the flight. It seems to gain a lot of We've speed once you level out, though. Little conversation uh, with the Apollo 12 crew on this, the uh, 44th revolution around the moon. Jerry Carr just uh, passed along a uh, quick look at uh, consumables aboard, uh, referring there to uh, propellants uh, for the service module uh, RCS quads. And at this time we show Apollo 12 uh, in an orbit of 65.2 nautical miles by 55.2 nautical miles. Presently uh, near its apaloon uh, with an showing an altitude of 62 nautical miles. We'll stand by and continue to monitor. We've got 15 minutes uh, remaining until we lose uh, signal with the Apollo 12 command module on this uh, front side pass around the moon. Clipper Houston, the computer's yours. Houston, go. He drives a good bus, Houston. Are you copying those angles? Roger, they're beautiful. They're reporting at this time. Roger. Apollo Control Houston at 169 hours of 58 minutes down to the flight. Less than 10 minutes away from time of loss of signal. Uh, that report uh, from Apollo 12 uh, coming from Dick Gordon. The uh, Apollo 12 uh, spacecraft uh, presently in program 52, uh, a navigational uh, platform alignment program. So at uh, 169 hours, 58 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Clipper Houston, Apollo Control, Houston. I don't see a uh, particularly good name for this series of bays coming up in front of us. 
Except I can say that apparently uh, the Saudi Aramco Tanaji Marine Port is on one of those peninsulas. Continue to monitor for any uh, final call ups that uh, Jerry Carr might make uh, to the Apollo 12 crew uh, before they pass out of range and over the uh, far side of the moon. Yankee Clipper Houston, uh, you're one minute from LOS. Uh, things are looking good, and we're looking for you around the horn at 17053. Over. Roger. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 170 hours, 8 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 12, and we've just had loss of signal with the uh, command and service. Pretty good winds for our flight. As the spacecraft with the Apollo 12 crew passes above the backside of the moon. Meanwhile, in uh, Mission Control Center Houston, we're undergoing a... Uh, change of shift among flight controllers. Flight director uh, Pete Frank and his orange uh, flight control team will be leaving their consoles and being replaced by uh, flight director uh, Jerry Griffin and the gold flight control team. As uh, Pete Frank's uh, group of flight controllers came on duty this morning, uh, the crew was awake. Uh, However, it had been previously reported uh, by the crew that uh, Pete Conrad uh, slept some four and a half hours uh, during the rest cycle. Uh, Al Bean uh, reported four hours and uh, Dick Gordon four hours, somewhat under uh, the period of time allocated a seven and a half hour rest period. Uh, during uh, the day, the uh, crew showed some signs of weariness. Uh, no doubt accumulated uh, from the busy schedule of the preceding days. Uh, they lacked uh, some of the uh, exuberance and uh, tendency to talk that uh, they have shown. <laughs> oh dear. More active uh, periods of their lunar flight. He, is he saying that Pete Conrad is tired? Of, uh, possible future Apollo landing sites and landmark tracking. When Honestly, Conrad, uh, staring at the lunar surface could get tiring after a little while. Uh, magazine uh, was knocked off of the camera. Control Center and the uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, became in, involved in what uh, was termed by one of the flight controllers in the Mission Control Center as Gemini-type flight planning, uh, real-time changes in flight. On uh, Rev 43, landmark tracking uh, was replaced with a... Uh, repeat of the uh, photography of the Descartes and Fra Mauro sites on uh, the front side pass of Rev 44 uh, the Apollo 12 crew did a combination of stereo photography and landmark tracking the map showed some uh, the, uh, little uh, fancy uh, islands of, that uh, were supposed to be Control back Center there but made their news so the, uh, the photo scenery didn't capture them. Uh, on the, uh, Not decorative islands, RCS, uh, they uh, seemed a little bit more functional, quads on the service module. but definitely man-made. At the start of, uh, at the onset of acquisition for the 44th uh, revolution, a preliminary pad uh, for TEI was passed up to uh, Pete Conrad, who copied down uh, those numbers uh, preliminary pad there will be a, a, a final pad that will be passed on uh, to the crew just prior uh, to the burn itself we'll repeat again some of those preliminary numbers that were included in that pad uh, the ground elapsed time for ignition uh, 172 hours 27 minutes 16.15 seconds The uh, total delta V of uh, 3,042 uh, 
1.1 feet per second of posi grade burn, of course, uh, for this return trip from the moon. And a uh, burn duration of uh, 2 minutes 10 seconds. We're at uh, 170 hours, uh, 12 minutes into the flight uh, of Apollo 12, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 170 hours, 13 minutes now into the flight. And uh, we did want to uh, advise all members of the press that a briefing concerning release of onboard photography will be held at uh, 1 p.m. today. That's uh, less than uh, 30 minutes from this time at 1 p.m. today in the uh, Houston News Center. Okay, so uh, we are approaching a city here called Al Jubail. This is Apollo Control at 100. It's uh, right to our Ford, minutes. right there. At 1 p.m. Central Standard. We see time, some of these island structures. These are similar to the, in the ones Houston I saw on the map there will be a further back. On the release of sort of like this. Photography. Repeating. Clearly utilitarian. Briefing on the release of onboard photography will begin in the Houston News Center in five minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 53 minutes. We're about 15 seconds away from acquisition of Yankee Clipper on the 45th Lunar Revolution. The Capcom on this shift is astronaut Don Lind. We'll stand by for uh, acquisition. We have acquisition of signal. Apollo 12, the General Houston Clipper here. Uh, Roger, uh, we've got. Hello there, how are you today? Just fine. How's things up near the moon? <laughs> they are getting tired. Poor souls. Hey, listen, I've got some uh, time They wanted to come back early, I Thank bet. But uh, there was enough margin, according to uh, did, yeah, the conversation in the previous video. The data for the higher resolution photography pad for Lalande, but we want to uh, make sure that you understand that this is your option. Uh, we don't want to press you too much on this last pass before TEI. So if you want to do it, fine. We'll appreciate no, it. I think we uh, might get to uh, trans Earth injection during this video then. We want to do it because I messed it up myself this morning. I want to get it. Okay, I'll whenever you're ready to copy, I'll give you the, money, the uh, information. Go ahead, I'm ready to copy. Okay, T1 is 1713052. T2 is 171 plus 34 plus 52. Roll 7.1. Pitch 141.1. Yaw 8.2. Maneuver to the attitude by 171. Plus two four. Now the target is not the crater rim. The target has been displaced south eight nautical miles. So what we'd like you to do is estimate that, pick a point near that spot, and track whatever point you pick. Now the gouge on eight nautical miles is that it's three lines on the coas, and the radius of the crater is six and one quarter nautical miles. The camera settings remain the same. You've got uh, pull and accept on a computer, Houston. Thank you. Hey, uh, Houston, uh, we're kicking this three line width business over. Uh, I just uh, say it at eight nautical miles in acquisition is three line widths worth on the coas? 
three degrees, that is three marks offset. Oh, 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 three degrees. Okay, very good, I understand. Uh, I have for you, when you want to copy them, uh, the updates to your TEI 45 pad and also a TEI 46 pad. We can do that anytime, either before or after the photography that you want. Okay, we're ready to do that in about two seconds. Roger. Okay, go ahead. Okay, do you want the whole uh, TEI pad over again uh, or just the changes? There will be four of them. Why don't you just give us the changes? Okay, this is the TEI 45 pad. The first change is noun 33. The correct one is 172. 271681 Noun 81 is plus 30271 plus 03023 The delta V burn time box Oh, there's actually appropriate shadowing due to the windows. Uh, you can see the light through the windows two, on the one, wing surface. Zero, not perfect, it's all jagged three, and everything, zero, but two, one, hey, it's something. One. And the GET for .05G is two, four, So this rather large city that we're two, coming one, up on is called the Mom. And we're pretty close to Bahrain now. So I'm hanging okay, on left. Delta VT is 30423. Apollo 12, the computer is yours. Thank you. Roger. I had uh, Houston, did you agree with that readback? We didn't get your readback. Roger, uh, how are you now? I hear you loud and clear. Okay. First correction was now 33 in the second column. Should be 1614. Once again, a reminder, I cut out silences, so there's probably a big gap where Mission Control was expecting a readback and the mission was doing a readback, but Mission con Control couldn't hear a readback during that time and it was, there was just silence recorded. That's a fancy bay right there. I got that some curls correct. in. Uh, do you want the TEI 46 pad? Wait just a second. We're not at uh, Dubai levels of ostentatiousness yet, but uh, you know, there's some signs. There's still sort of more of a business like sort of place. I don't know about that island there. That looks weird. TEI 46, SPS, GNN. Noun 47. NA. Nice big airport there. Down 48 NA. Time is 174. And we can see Bahrain there. One That's five, the island. Four, one. An island nation. Down 81 plus three, zero, seven, and there is a tunnel three, between the Mom and Bahrain. Zero, three, one, two, seven. Minus zero, one, I think we can sort of see where it is with that roadway and then you can see uh, island in the middle there that the tunnel goes through and then another island that uh, also helps support it so yeah right right here at our is it a tunnel or a bridge I can't tell by the map maybe it's a bridge would expect, given this length, that it would be a tunnel, though. Apollo 
12 break break Okay, we are now over Bahraini waters, and yep, this island is Bahrain. That's the whole country, well, and some of these little islands nearby. It's got some fancy islands over there, including that squarish one. But obviously we some sort of crescent symbol one there. Uh, better give you your AOS time, don't you think? Yeah, these guys are getting eager. Step it up. Uh, From here AOS we need to turn a, a little bit further south to fly over Doha. Plus four two. Without TEI is 172 plus 52 plus 00. zero. The land that you see sort of on the horizon up ahead, sort of in the midst of the distance fog, is Qatar. So we'll be going straight from Bahraini waters to Qatari waters. Some more of those fancy islands there to our right. This is Apollo Control at 171 hours 14 minutes. To recap, the TEI Trans Earth Injection Maneuver. Time of ignition, 172 hours, 27 minutes, 16 seconds. This will be performed while Yankee Clipper is behind the moon. Delta V, increase in velocity of 3,000. 42.3 feet per second. Duration of the burn, 2 minutes, 9.84 seconds. The, some of the uh, entry numbers based on this TEI and these numbers do not take into account any mid-courses. They are based strictly on the TEI burn. 400,000 So this is Cutter? Time would be 244 hours, 21 minutes, 27 seconds. The west coast of Andy it appears Cooper less decorated. 05G, 244 hours, 21 minutes, 56 seconds. Splash predicted time 244 hours 35 minutes 21 seconds. 
based on this uh, burn, the velocity at, at entry interface is projected to be 36,116.4 feet per second. And it, this TEI burn is targeted for an entry angle of minus 6.50 degrees. Acquisition time with a successful TEI burn, 172 hours, 40 minutes, 42 seconds. Acquisition time without a burn, 172 hours, 52 minutes, zero seconds. Uh, the time without the burn, we'll thankfully. We'll continue to stand by live for any air to ground. This is Mission Control Houston. Never got one of those. 71 hours, 17 minutes. All the burns were done properly. Cutter is not very big, it's just a peninsula, but not a whole lot of land use, is it? Then again, I mean, it is desert after all. Presumably there's oil around and some of these places we see some railways and installations are probably attempting to exploit it, but oh that's uh, interesting circuits there. Apparently, those uh, raceway kind of roads that we see over there, that's for the Ash Sha'anya Camel Shelter. Far as I can tell. So, I guess they race camels. Or it could be a coincidence that the camel shelter has roads that, or paths that look like raceways. Doesn't say that there's a camel racing center, just says camel shelter. So this is Doha? going straight from Qatar and its territorial waters to the United Arab Emirates so if we're cutting across for south we'd cut over a little bit of Saudi Arabia but not on this path we've got some more fancy islands the the, the island uh, detailing has increased Substantially. Your star is going to be just a little late uh, coming into view uh, for the, uh, on the geometry is much more intricate. We can see obviously that it's been uh, landfilling uh, at the location of the airport. Pretty typical for airports to be built on uh, artificial islands. 
8, which is about two or three minutes after it's shown in the flight plan for the star check. Twenty minutes of acquisition time remains in this 45th lunar revolution. Dick Gordon reporting with Yankee Clipper is in the proper attitude for TEI, reporting that shortly he will be going to program 40 on the command module computer. That's you get the feeling that the that Doha airport scenery is supposed SPS to be some separate thrusting. scenery, but it looks as look like the big looks like it has system. gone a little bit wrong there. I don't know. Two members of the backup crew for Apollo 12 have joined Don Lind at the Capcom console. They're the commander, Dave Scott, and the backup command module pilot, Al Worden. Deke Slayton, the director of flight crew operations, and Astronaut Tom Stafford, chief of the astronaut office, are also uh, at the console. Houston 12, uh, star check's okay. Very good. Apollo 12, Houston, we show about two minutes to LOS, and everything is looking good to us down here. Once again, the burn to leave lunar orbit and return to the Earth nice will be done out of communication with with Earth, so okay. now Earth has to wait to find out what happens. Apollo 12, Houston, we'll see you coming around the other side at 172.40, headed for home. Roger, roger, bye-bye. See you on the other side. Have fun. And we've had loss of signal from Yankee Clipper at 172 hours, five minutes. As Commander Pete Conrad says, Roger, Roger, bye-bye, see you on the other side. I can only assume his Roger, Roger is later Transert taken up by that Robot from Star Wars. 72 hours, 27 minutes, 16 seconds. I don't know if Roger Roger was a more common thing, or With whether it's burn, literally it inspired by Pete Conrad. But from the only two Apollo times I've heard 12, Roger Roger is hours, that robot in minutes, Star Wars, the prequels, and uh, and Pete Conrad. A, a few seconds after that, before we get some voice, without a burn. Acquisition of signal 172.52 even. And we should have some television approximately 15 minutes after acquisition uh, with the TEI burn. Television planned about 172 hours, 55 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston at 172 hours, 7 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 27 minutes. We're 10 seconds away from ignition time for the trans-Earth injection burn. Mark, the burn should be starting right now. Yankee Clipper is behind the moon where we cannot monitor the burn. We'll get a report on it when we acquire uh, the spacecraft. Yankee Clipper's weight at loss of signal on this revolution was 34,163 pounds. should be considerably lighter the next time we see the spacecraft after this burn. Duration of this burn, two minutes, 
9.84 seconds. According to the clock, we're 50 minutes in, 50 seconds into this burn right now. Yankee Clippers velocity just prior to the burn uh, was uh, 5,320 feet per second. We've crossed over into the UAE. We'll this island to our right is part of it. I think it's second. called Al Cafe. It's got a uh, runway on it. We'll come back up uh, just prior to acquisition time. I guess it must We're be some sort of resort or something. 11 minutes and 50 seconds away from acquisition time, given a good burn. This is Mission Control Houston at 172 hours, 28 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 39 minutes. We're one minute, 35 seconds away from the time when we should receive Yankee Clipper signal after trans-earth injection burn. We'll stand by live from now on. All of the uh, TV lines are up. And it, it is conceivable uh, the crew could have the TV on at the time they come around the moon. It's not scheduled for that time, but uh, we're prepared to take a TV picture should uh, the camera be on. Oh, you know they'll be excited about returning home and they'll put the TV on for sure. 30 seconds. He's every island has a runway apparently. AOS. We have acquisition of signal. Apollo 12, Houston. Hello, Houston. Apollo 12. The label on these islands is Higher Yasat. But. Whereas the previous island, I saw, you know, some indications of a resort or something. I don't know why these have runways. <laughs> Seems like there's a whole lot going on. Let's uh, see where the photo scenery starts over there. Uh, otherwise, that's definitely the stock texture right in front of us. You can tell by the re repetition. So we'll turn towards the coast. Roger, 7.4, there. 7.7, and plus 50. Looks good. As we should. Apollo 12, Houston. If you have a camera out already and plan some pictures uh, coming back, we have a target of opportunity for you. However, if you don't have a camera out, we don't want you to bother to dig one out. We have a camera out. Uh, Roger, they would uh, be extremely happy if you could get some uh, pictures of high lunar latitudes so that we can get some small scale mapping. The procedure is as follows. At time one seven plus zero five, we'd like you to use the Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter lens, black and white film, F 5.6, and infinity and take pictures at high latitudes 
three frames about every 30 seconds. To our left is Dama Island, and in front of us there is Surbanias Island. Apparently it's got some interesting Terra features. They want three frames together at 30 Named intervals. after an ancient tribe. Roger, and give me the time again, would you uh, please? Well, the time's not critical. Uh, uh, one seven three plus zero five, which is sort of during the last half of your TV pass. But this is uh, your option. Okay. You ready to receive? Yankee Clipper is 426 nautical miles away from the moon now. Velocity 7,396 feet per second. Weight 25,289 pounds. standing by for a TV signal. We have nothing yet. And a black and white picture coming in. And why? We expect color any minute. Okay, looks like we're climbing straight up from it. So this is Serbanias Island. Looks rather interesting. Okay, it looks like we're climbing straight up from it. It's not uh, man-made, it's definitely... Uh, I don't know about the shoreline, but... It's definitely an uh, old island with archaeological sites color. and everything. Sudden variations in loudness.
we found that uh, the part that uh, was now on a higher sun looked fairly uh, smooth, or at least like the rest of the road is as you see it, and the part that was now under the terminator looked like the roughest. So I guess you get a real feel for the texture of the moon by looking at, at near the terminator where you can see uh, the height of the uh, craters and the mountains and uh, all the many uh, features that are on the moon in uh, more relief. Roger. If you point the camera up there towards the north, you can see a couple of long rills. We're basically headed straight for Dubai at this point. Well, we'll pass fairly close to, basically aim for a point between Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Say. The impression that I get, Don, and I had one the first time I looked at the Terminator 2, is that it's really useless for you all to have colors down there because it's pure black and white. And uh, the way it looks to me right now, where we are, uh, looks to me like a blue moon. And uh, I'm not really looking at the real moon. It, uh, it just doesn't look uh, right. It's so black and white. It looks like a painting. Right, it looks just like a black and white photograph, doesn't it? Roger, we copy. Well, it, it's real enough to make me want to go in the direction I'm going after 90 hours. Altitude 902 miles. at the upper top, uh, I see one rill up there. I don't know if you can see it on your TV camera. It's almost a straight line. It's about... Uh, I'm looking at the monitor, and I can't see it on the monitor. It's about uh, a third of the way down from the top. It runs horizontally across there, and it looks just almost like a straight line. Roger, it's kind of hard for us to see it on our screen down here. Altitude 940 miles. Velocity 6,576 feet per second. Uh, can you identify any of the features for us, 12? Well, we'll, uh, we'll break out our map. You know, our map doesn't go to the higher latitudes and lower. Once, uh, but we'll see what we can find, and we can point out to you that we know. Roger. Altitude 1,017 nautical miles. Got an interesting island formation up ahead that's called Mubara's Island. Say, Don, how long did you want us to keep up this uh, photography of the high latitudes? Three each 30 seconds. Stand by. Don't really know what to make of it, but it's there, that's for sure. You probably got enough now. Anything you want to give us? Looks like one of those ancient Egyptian we'll figures, somewhat. But it might just be utilitarian. I don't see anything on it. Not even a runway. Twelve, it's really amazing how much the science of the moon has changed just in the few minutes you've been on the air so far. Oh, well, when they get going away from the moon, they get going away from the moon. Well, I guess there's a little settlement there. We sure concur. I'm not half flight up prank. Half flight up prank. What's our altitude right now? What's our altitude rate? Can I know? Now, 
Yeah. I think one of the things you can't see in your TV, though, is how the uh, temperature of the moon changes at the higher the sun angle. And uh, over to the uh, extreme westerly region there, you can see how light it is and uh, how much more gray and stark it is by the Terminator. But we, as Al said, found it that way as the Terminator moved across. It all really looks the same. Roger, that shows up very clearly down here. Our off-board computer says we're 109 miles right now. Apollo 12, Houston, right now you're getting close to 1,100 nautical miles above the surface and you're coming up about 4,000 feet a second. Uh, okay, we're, we're reading our history wrong. We're showing uh, 1,098 miles. Of course, the speed away from the moon is maximum when they're close to it. It's constantly sort of tugging back, so their speed actually goes down right up to where they switch SOI to the Earth. And then once they, have, uh, uh, once they cross that boundary, they're speeding up relative to the Earth. The, uh, but still going fairly slow the initially. altitude 1,230 nautical miles. Paul 12, Houston, we show that you're coming up at about one nautical mile a second. You're really moving out.
because we were interested in our landing area and possibly finding some Copernican ray material and looking at the rays and everything. And uh, they are quite readily visible from 60 nautical miles. But if you look at them carefully uh, through the binocular or something like that, uh, I think that the difference in texture is so slight. When okay, we are approaching Abu Dhabi uh, once we get to the coast. Still over the Persian uh, Gulf here in our, I guess, Persian Gulf to tour. Could see no contact difference whatsoever anywhere we went. And, uh, I really shouldn't I be going this fast uh, at this altitude. You look at the boom going away, you get that idea. You see highlights in whites and grays. You can see rays and things like that. But they're really not that much different in color from one another. Roger. What about the uh, white and gray differences you saw over around the west side of Head Crater? Could you see those out over the uh, regional area? Well, I, I kind of have the feeling that uh, Al and I talked about this, that when we were in the right place uh, and our foot tracks turned up the uh, lighter material, and it was still the same material, it's just that uh, had weathered on the surface, and uh, we we have the feeling that the ray material is probably the same thing. It's it pretty much the uh, the same general material, but it, it came at different times and it's had different amounts of exposures or weathering. Roger. Yeah, well, this is uh, there just didn't seem to be any difference in the colors at all. Uh, if you look at any part of the moon at the same time as any other part of the moon. Now, as, you, as we started at the Terminator and went around the moon, it changed color from gray to white, finally to brown, and we all sort of thought that was about what it was. And then the next day, it did the same thing. The part that used to be more to the white, now it was the gray because the shadows were over there more as the Terminator moved in that direction. And we weren't able to see except in several... Uh, spots, any real large differences in colors. I'll tell you, Pete, can you show them that large crater down there in the lower left here? That was Alpine. Yeah, brother. No, it's way over here on the uh, opposite side from the Terminator. There's Tycho. Can you show them that one? with the cracks, uh, several craters in the middle. That's a beautiful crater. Hey, just to give us some idea of the color, how would you just... TV and I'll show How would you describe the color of Smythe Sea and the Sea of Tranquility for us so we'll know how accurate our uh, TV color is? It just seems a chalky gray to us. Like Portland cement? Pretty much. As good as anything else. I want to know whether it's wet or dry. Dark marine material. Wet or dry? Yeah, come on, looks wet. Would you, would you believe that? No, as a matter of fact, that's probably not too bad a description. If you just threw some Portland cement down and threw water on it, varying about to be a little more moist and, uh, and then others, and I get the same idea looking down here. Yeah, the, the wet part, of course, would be the darker uh, barring material that's there. And it is light considerably by rills and craters and ejecta that's been uh, taking place there. And this is giving, giving it a lighter uh, texture, but, uh, but basically remaining the same type of material, I'm sure. Hey, listen, tell us about those grooves and ridges you saw on the surface. Did you uh, get any patterns out of those? Could you see those from orbit? Hey, 12, is that the subsolar point? Oh, Don, the once we saw... Uh, the 
see just to the south of that bright impact crater is the one that in the middle of it are two craters. One crater has a single ray that runs horizontally all the way through it, and the other crater has a single ray that just runs out one side of it. Very odd set of ray patterns there. Roger. I'd say, Don, you're asking, you're asking about those uh, lights. We don't, well, the ones we saw on the ground were very, very small, maybe an eighth of an inch. But there are uh, definite uh, patterns on the moon. I'm going to show you up at high latitudes right now. Let me see the monitor piece so I can see if I'm pointing the right place. And I think you'll be able to see some, some lines that seem to run from the pole all the way down towards the uh, center of the moon, towards the equator. Let's uh, see if I can get up in the right place. So, this is Abu Dhabi. It seems to emanate right from the pole region, right where the um, Terminator strikes the, the pole, and then they seem to come down towards uh, the Mari area. They seem to run in parallel lines from that point on down. Uh, Roger, they just barely show up on our screen. But you get a look at the crater Tycho, that's pretty impressive because it's large, it has a lot of rays, and it also has. Uh, Although the rays at this particular sun angle aren't, aren't so visible, you can see it as, as a large, one of the larger craters down in the uh, southern part of the moon. Easily visible for one, one of the most visible from Earth. Roger, we didn't know whether that was Tycho or whether, whether that was the subsolar point. No, that's Tycho. And also that crater just to the north of it, which I don't know the name of, is uh, also a very bright crater. Here's very white in uh, our little monitor up here. Roger, we see it very clearly down here too. There you are. Let's move it to that hatch one. It's a better one to see. Altitude so have an interesting sort of simple grid miles. for the most part. With some flare here and there. 5,868 feet per second. My game looks okay. Very much seems like one of those cities you might end up with in City Skylines or SimCity, to be honest. At a certain point. On to Dubai. We've got a good picture of that. You know, the most amazing thing is that you were just in orbit down there a few minutes ago. More so to us than I'm sure you, Don. I'm sure that's true. We're getting that sort of detached feeling, detached from the moon. Okay, can they see it as a whole uh, sphere now? Okay. You're cutting out just a little bit of the south. Yeah, it's in the, uh, it's, uh, I just can't move the camera there in the window. No, you're doing a great job. Well, I keep the camera up and down the same way all the time. Like... Uh, 
Are we coming out in the Earth Moon plane here? Are we going over the top or what? But we were just discussing this, wondering. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not obvious if we leave what we're doing. It's my guess would say we'd be coming right out along the equatorial plane. But what are we actually doing? That's sort of a fuzzy island right there. Oh, no data. Okay, so we're missing data on this area right here. We'll ignore that then. Let's get a different view. Altitude okay, that's pitching up quite a lot. Nautical miles, velocity 5,765 feet per second. I sort of put the juice on and I didn't want to really go up, I want to go faster. Uh, Hey, listen, while we're getting that, uh, since you're the uh, international experts on lunar rock rolling, uh, how does that work? Uh, tell us what a rock looks like when it rolls down a, uh, a lunar crater. <laughs> since you did experts on rock that. rolling. Not rick rolling, rock rolling. Well, it goes very slowly. And uh, I guess the impression you have, the same way as if you throw something up there, and we had occasion to throw uh, some things away, uh, they sort of move out, uh, not too rapidly, but they just keep going. And, uh, that's exactly what happens when you roll a rock down the side of a crater. Once you can get, it was hard to get them going, I was surprised. Uh, I think everybody had the idea up there that, uh, because you're in such light gravity, uh, that things would, uh, roll down rather easily, and that really wasn't the case. Once you got it going, it just sort of went along and animated slow motion, but it kept going for a long, long time. Do they bounce, or do they dig in, and do they go through this down to the bottom? Uh, they bounce, they slide, uh, a little bit of everything, uh, just like they do on Earth, but uh, just stretch it out. I was, uh, I, I, I found that I couldn't walk. Uh, wherever we went, we loped, and uh, it just didn't seem natural not to lope. And, but when you loop, it reminds me of these pictures, uh, high speed motion pictures of, of watching a giraffe run or, a, or something like that. That's just the feeling I had as I loped across because I'd have to step out and then just sort of hold what I had until I came down. And that's the way Al and I moved around on the whole traverse. Sounds like you're having a ball. Dick, if you could pitch down the little board, help eat a lot. Well, Al accused me of making them carry all the tools. They're always much more excited when they're on the way home. I noticed that with Apollo 11. Very energetic after having done the trans earth injection. Of course, they're also doing the TV thing right now. So, here are some of those special island formations, palm tree things. Finally, 
to expedite things, uh, we'd either just fall over on our face, pick up the rock, and give ourselves a one-handed push-up, or just get down on our knees and get get whatever it was we to pick up down there. Because we picked up many rocks that were bigger than the tongs would pick up. Uh, Roger, your uh, heart rates were just about as expected. This is called Palm and, uh, Jabil, Jabil Ali. The and then the other one, one is the Palm Jumeirah. Also, we are about to lose one of the satellites that's bringing this uh, TV back to the States. Uh, so we're probably going to have to bid goodbye here fairly soon. And uh, the sort of city okay. you see... Next to the Palm Jumeirah is, I guess, Jumeirah. Jumeirah Lake Towers and stuff like that going on there. This is all broadly Dubai anyway. Oh, okay, I'm going fast again. We can see uh, the Burj Dubai from here. And uh, those islands in the shape of the world to our left as well. The Good continents, idea. broadly speaking. Not my favorite projection. They make uh, South America and Africa look awful small compared to the way it's, they are. We were hunting the monitor just then as we moved the camera inside the stuff. Oh, I think it's loading the stuff. The there we go. Of a stutter here. It's loading Dubai. OBS, which I use to record the videos, says encoding overloaded, so it might be studier, stutterier for you than for me. Actually, OBS uses more uh, CPU than x does. Right now, the recording is taking 29 to 34 percent of the CPU, whereas x is taking 27. So it's, uh, limits the frame rates I get when I record. Simply playing it, I would get far more, I think. fast again. We got air brakes. Unfortunately, not Apollo 13. Apollo 13 will not give a good look on the surface. Uh, like. Oh, Bruce Dubai is looking good. Probably ought to fly something a little bit slower to get a good look at it. It is fine. It's been a long flight, well, I mean, compared to the average of the videos, so I'll just take it in for a landing. Well, 
I don't know if the next flight will get a good look at uh, Burj Dubai and the uh, rest of the city, considering I'm flying a faster plane, a Rafale. And that will be to Karachi in Pakistan. Okay. Time to do cockpit things. I also gave myself quite a thrill. I think you'll appreciate it when you see the pictures and you see how close we landed to the crater, which I didn't notice at the time because it was behind me. But I did want to overfly to horrible sound they've got in the background there. The edge of the crater. And uh, we were also uh, very impressed at uh, uh, the tracking and everything uh, put us right down the middle. Uh, everybody at all we did their homework there. We didn't have to do anything to land her. Got uh, Dick. Uh, surprised me, I think, uh, by finding us, not only finding us in the section, but also finding the surveyor in the lab in the section. He also took some pictures through his uh, uh, section uh, with 16 millimeter camera of that on the next drive, and hopefully uh, we'll have movies of the lab and the surveyor on the ground that, that are discernible in the movies. I don't know whether that'll work or not. We'll have to wait till we see the film. Very good. We'll be looking for them. Now. We've enjoyed the trip. We've enjoyed the trip. Uh, everybody adapted to zero G real well. We enjoyed whistling in and out of the lamb and uh, after having flown eight days in Jemney, it's a real pleasure riding around in this thing, being able to move around and uh, have all the good food and hot water and shave and all those good things we couldn't do. We uh, kept the ship pretty spick and span, and uh, we do have things all neatly stowed. I don't know if you can show them. Why don't you show them the surveyor back? No, I can't, can't see it. Well, with that, uh, I think we'll sign off, and uh, we'll see you in about three days. Thanks a million. All three of you did a 4 0 job, and your families and the whole team are waiting for you back down here on the ground. Okay. Now they're back to serious business, you can tell. After the TV. been a while since they've been in PTC because after all uh, they don't do that around the moon the nighttime side takes care of the cooling but there just doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason why we are or why uh, why it's setting out there all the time we were in like a orbit we were discussing the fact how unreal it looked and it, uh, it was uh, it's amazing to us to, to fly around and it is just uh, when you just think about going to the moon it, it is uh very, very unreal to be there. You know, your pictures were absolutely fantastic showing how fast you moved away from the, the moon. You, you really gave us a good picture of that. Very hazy to land. Well, we're still doing it. really getting small in our it's, it's, uh, it's just sort of unreal to look at. It's almost like a photograph moving away from you. That seems possible. It can be Don't whole, give uh, conspiracy theorists any ideas, uh, Pete. <laughs> Honestly. A couple hours ago. Well, when you first uh, gave us a picture, you looked like you were uh, very close to uh, your orbital altitude, but by the time the uh, picture went inside, uh, it looked like about a basketball out at arm's length. You can actually see lots of indications on my little... I guess I'll call it a map right there. They sure don't make it a mystery how to line up, huh? Tremendous. Yankee Clipper is 2,551 nautical miles away from the moon now. 
velocity 5,400. Is that hazy feet. outside? Yeah. So it's not just the cockpit. We're pretty low. Well, adding yeah, flaps uh, really have, gives a lot of lift in this right now. Yeah, it's extremely small, uh, something like a third or a quarter of a foot, or a third or a half foot per second. Hey, that's great, that's great. It was a very excellent burn, uh, it's going to be a real small one. Copy. Oh, I forgot. Wrong key. There we go. There's the Burj Dubai towering over all those other buildings. You heard Don Lind pass up a figure of 4,000 feet per second. That was not Apollo 12's inertial velocity. The two runways are pretty close together, but staggered. Which, uh, I'm going for Apollo the one further was, in. Uh, going away from the moon. Go. Now uh, listen, once you guys get bedded down, we're not going to uh, awaken you in the morning. So whenever you get up and want to start a new day, you give us a call. Uh, you've uh, earned a good long night's sleep, so sleep in as long as you want. Okay, no problem. Yeah, a lot of you. I think I gained weight on this trip. <laughs> They've accused me of being a cowhound. How come you're not getting out and doing your mile a day? He doesn't run it from his couch to the food compartment. <laughs> 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 Wait till they get the really good food on Skylab. Roger. Uh, the computer is yours. We finished uh, sending up your rest, man. That is how I currently look. Okay, thank you. Uh, how long can we? When do you want us to start PPC? Not bad. Anytime you want. Okay, we'd like to watch it for a while. Uh, let's hold off. We're right in the middle of a playback uh, of data, so uh, give us some time on that. At 173 hours, 32 minutes. Apollo 12's distance from the moon, 2,761. Feels like I'm going slow, Velocity so slow. I think. Feet per second. Yeah, I need to fix up the 3P FPS, 3J FPS, that little plugin I use to limit the. As we were explaining earlier, that 4,000. The ground scenery, that we passed especially when we're close to airports, it's making a little bit slow right now. From the moon. It did not have uh, several other components of velocity in it. Was only in the uh, in the vector directly away from the moon. Part of the problem with the oh, recording. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Um, part of the recording uh, right. problem is that I have to record in uh, 1440p, even though I'm not playing in that, uh, because otherwise YouTube makes the videos look horrid. You know, the, I mean, not even like 320p okay. if I try and upload a 1080p one because of their weird way of doing things. So, um, upsampling takes this a lot of CPU. At 173 hours, 40 minutes. Flaps. Yeah. Flaps. I, I've got flaps. I've got flaps. Flaps now happened. Now, 3,139 nautical miles. They definitely don't need more flaps. Thank you. Per second. Flaps, flaps. Hello, 12. In the process of realigning its inertial platform at the present time. 
at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. There will be a briefing in the briefing room at the Houston News Center. Unstable. Unstable. By the Apollo Space. You sure? <laughs> program manager Jim McDivitt. I mean, it's sort of close, I know, but all right, I'll give it a little bit more flaps, but it's going to pitch up quite a lot at the last minute here. Don Arabian. Concerning the completed analysis of the electrical I don't want her shouting at me anymore, that's all. Yeah, oh, yeah, this lift that I don't need. PM Central Standard Time in the briefing room at the Houston News Center. That briefing will be carried on the uh, this release line. The crew should be have entered into their sleep period at that time. We'll continue to stay up and monitor until the crew does uh, bed down. And this is Apollo Control. Houston at 173 hours, 41 minutes. Well, sorry it is taking so long, but we're almost there. Hours, 50 minutes. I'll try and get that plug-in in from the moon. for next time. Though, I mean, for most of the flight, it's really not necessary. It was pretty smooth until, but once you get to the airport, you know. Okay, we are down. Didn't really hear the landing gear touchdown, uh, to be ready, honest. Uh, you're ready for any memory dump. Give us just a moment. Okay. And I should be hanging uh, right, judging from where the terminal was. Apollo 12, uh, Houston, we're ready for that e-memory dump now. Okay. Okay. Apollo 12, uh, we've got a good e-memory dump. Thank you very much. So with that e-memory dump, I'm going to pause the audio. And say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.